My name is Linda Mayo, and I'm the Vice Mayor of the City of Berkeley, here representing Mayor Bates. I'm here to welcome you on behalf of the City of Berkeley. I'm here to thank you for your work, your interest, your intelligence, your focus to keep this issue front and center for all of us. I'm also here to acknowledge the fact that academic excellence is not alone in qualifying you to teach our young people. You need to also teach moral fiber and ethics and be strong on the whole entire piece. So the university has some work to do here. Maybe a 12-step program for John Yu. Welcome him back into a possible in our good graces. So we were very lucky to have a wonderful panel of speakers tonight. Um, and to have you and me together here in Berkeley. Let's do good work. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Nell, and I'm one of the law students here at Berkeley, and a member of both my college workers. We'd like to welcome you guys here tonight. We're really excited about this event. Um, we're really excited about all these amazing speakers. And so yeah, welcome, and let's get the show on the road. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Abdi Soltani. I'm the executive director of the ACLU of Northern California. And I want to thank everybody for being here tonight, but I especially want to thank uh, the dedicated group of volunteers who, on their own time and with their own resources, have organized this event. So just to start, we want to thank Susan Harmon, Cynthia Papermaster, <laughs> Stephanie Tang, Yanin Senechai, Sharon Adams, Kirk Wexler, Mary Ann Thomas, and I'm sure there are many others whose names I've left off the list, but I want to thank all of the people who make this event possible through their hard work and through their organizing efforts. I also want to thank our readers uh, for a, a very uh, wonderful group of people who are writers and teachers and activists and actresses and all kinds of uh, different um, entry points who are each going to be reading tonight from different documents and different transcripts and legal memos and dialogues all related to this issue of, of torture. Um, after the event, uh, we'd like to invite everybody to a special reception at Hotel Durant. Um, if you made the higher level donation, that's included in your donation. Um, otherwise, if you made the minimum donation, we ask that you contribute an extra $15 uh, towards the reception, and we'd welcome you to come and um, hang out with the readers and with all of the other participants tonight. The readings tonight uh, were really derived from a variety of sources. The work that made this evidence public is the work of many journalists, many activists, many lawyers, who as one step towards the accountability that we expect and demand for torture, were able to release these documents and make them public. That is the most important step that has occurred yet in terms of our path for accountability, is the making of these documents public. And tonight we'll be reading from a number of these memos and a number of these um, uh, transcripts that were made possible through the energy and the dedication of people who are alert and focused on human rights both here in the United States and elsewhere throughout the world. These documents reveal that at the highest levels of the Bush administration the torture program was authorized, sanctioned, and carried out with their design and their approval. But there are many more documents thousands of pages of documents that have not yet been released and that will continue to be the focus of litigation and advocacy to make even more documents public. But more importantly, there is so far very little done uh, to bring to account uh, the actions of the people responsible for these policies. As yet, there is no congressional investigation and as of this moment, there is only a very limited criminal investigation that is going to those practices of torture which were beyond those authorized uh, by the Bush administration. 
So we have a lot of work to do, but tonight we begin that work and we continue that work by keeping these issues um, front and center in our minds and in our public eye. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to this evening's program. We're coming up one by one, and there is just going to be a real flow as we work through this vast array of documents that have already been made public. And we welcome you and thank you for being here tonight. I'm Ray McGovern. And I am reading. I'm reading from a speech delivered by President George W. Bush on June 26, 2004. The speech was in commemoration of the International Day in Support of Torture Victims. Today, on United Nations International Day in Support of Victims of Torture, the United States reaffirms its commitment to the worldwide elimination of torture. Freedom from torture is an inalienable human right, and we are committed to building a world where human rights are respected and protected by the rule of law. America stands against and will not tolerate torture. We will investigate and prosecute all acts of torture and undertake to prevent other cruel and unusual punishment in all territory under our jurisdiction. American personnel are required to comply with all U.S. laws, including the United States Constitution, federal statutes, including statutes prohibiting torture, and our treaty obligations with respect to the treatment of all detainees. The United States also remains steadfastly committed to upholding the Geneva Conventions, which have been the bedrock of protection in armed conflict for more than 50 years. We expect other nations to treat our service members and civilians in accordance with the Geneva Conventions. Our armed forces are committed to complying with them and to holding accountable those in our military who do not. The American people were horrified by the abuse of detainees at Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. These acts were wrong. They were inconsistent with our policies and our values as a nation. I have directed a full accounting for the abuse of the Abu Ghraib detainees and investigations are underway to review detention operations in Iraq and elsewhere. Despite international efforts to protect human rights around the world, repressive regimes continue to victimize people through torture. The victims are often feeling forgotten, but we will not forget them. <laughs> America supports accountability and treatment centers for torture victims. We stand with the victims to seek healing and recovery and urge all nations to join us in these efforts to restore the dignity of every person affected by torture. These times of increasing terror challenge the world. Terror organizations challenge our comfort and our principles. The United States will continue to take seriously the need to question terrorists who have information that can save lives. But we will not compromise the rule of law or the values and the principles that make us strong. Torture is wrong, no matter where it occurs, and the United States will continue to lead the fight to eliminate it everywhere 